Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So recently I had a comment on one of my videos um, asking kind of what my favourite kind of cruelty free makeup brushes are and there's any that I would recommend and maybe when I do a video on it. And I did I have done a video on my kind of go to makeup brushes but it was probably about two years ago and I've found some new brands since then. Admittedly, there are brushes that did feature in that last video that I'm going to talk about today because there are some that I just absolutely love. But there are some new brands I want to talk about that I really enjoy. And in case you're looking for really good cruelty free makeup brushes, um, so this is for you. So I'm going to talk about the brands I like in terms of makeup brushes slash implements, because obviously there's a sponge involved. And then I'm going to show you, talk about my top 15, my 15 go-to brushes slash, slash tools that I use on a regular basis that I really enjoy and I think um, are really good. So, let's talk about brands I really like that are cruelty free in terms of makeup brushes. Now, number one, I think it's pretty obvious because it's the first kind of, before I, even before I went cruelty free, I think it's one of the first brands I went to for makeup brushes, and that is Real Techniques. They do some great brushes, they're made by, like, they're created by some very talented makeup artists that I do follow and I do kind of admire and aspire to be like. So obviously that's Sam and Nick from Pixie Woo and yeah they do some quality brushes and you'll see them in loads of people different videos because they are just so um, good to use. At a reasonable price you can get them at Superdrug or Boots if you're in the UK, really easy to get a hold of. Um, sometimes they don't do the brushes individually, they do them in packs which can be normally you want to replace one brush but overall they do some really great brushes, so they're really reasonably priced and they're a great staple whether you're just messing with makeup or actually a professional makeup artist. So I think either way, they're really good go-to makeup brushes to have. Um, closely followed by Luxie brushes. I Again, this is a brand that crops up quite a lot. You know I like my Luxie brushes. I have a whole range of face and eye brushes that I like and I use quite a bit and I just think Again, they're a very affordable brand in terms of brushes, I think, and I've got my mum hooked on some of them. Like, she I, she wanted some new breakup brushes, so I gave her a whole bunch of Real Techniques and Luxie brushes, because I think they're really, really good. And they're kind of my first two main sources, and the first two kind of like makeup um, brush brands I went to when I first started out. So I think they're really great. Other brands I've kind of discovered along the way, so obviously my Hunsen Pure brushes, I only own two brushes from them, but I really enjoy both of them. I say own two, I still cannot for the life of me find my E40 Hunsen Pure brush. It was my kind of go-to big fluffy brush, I always use my transition shade or buff or um, blending out other eyeshadows, and I still, I've taken sofa cushions off, I've kind of turned my room upside down, I really can't find this brush. So I'm going to have to get a new one because you know if you watch my videos for a long time that was a very big staple of mine. And yeah, I've only tried two brushes, two brushes but I've really been impressed with them and they really work well. They're slightly more, um, they do cost more than the Real Techniques and Luxie brushes because I think because they're part of the Green Beauty branding. So they do cost a little bit more but again another one that I'd say is definitely worth, I'd say it's worth spending the money on them because I think they're really, really good brushes. Um, one thing I will say is that they stain quite easily, so even if you clean them, if you use a colourful pigment on them, they can stain a little bit. But as long as you know they're clean, I guess it doesn't matter too much. Um, that's the thing with them being, because um, they are white haired instead of black haired like my Luxie ones or my Real Techniques ones, so that can be, if you like your brushes looking pristine, then that's going to be an issue, but if you're not, very pers if you're not a person that goes for really colourful looks, it's not going to matter to you anyway. A brand I've also kind of started using more brushes from recently is Iconic London as well. Again, they're slightly more on the higher end in terms of pricing wise. Um, but I've been kind of using them to, if you have been following me while, you know I've done some makeup training. I'm trying to kind of be going to the world of makeup as a professional makeup artist. I, 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 and you know, I'm trying to get into like the wedding industry and TV and film for special effects and prosthetics and things like that. Um, and so Iconic London is kind of a new brand that I've picked up that I kind of use and put aside well, originally solely for the purposes of my professional kit. I have been using it a little bit here and there as well. And they are really good brushes. Again, slightly more, like I said, slightly more high end. But again, really, really nice brushes. So those are probably the four main 
brushes that I use. And then I've got a few other brands. I also cruelty free that I have like one one brush of that I really really love. And there's a one brush that you know is going to pop up. And they've recently got it back in store, which I will talk about. But it's one that you can guarantee is going to be in here because I get asked about it quite a lot as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to now jump into the 15 kind of go-to brushes slash tools I like to use for applying my makeup. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the base kind of brushes and tools I like to go for kind of in the order I apply them. So talking first of foundation. So um. Usually I go for a brush. I like a good buffing brush. Something that's quite dense like this. This is the Luxie 534 Angle Top Buffer. But any good buffing brush works well. Because I just think it really like, yeah, obviously buffs and blends the product into your skin. And gives a really good even um, finish to your foundation and things like that. And I find it really fast as well to use a good dense buffing brush. Because it just really blends in fast and things like that. And I have also recently been going back to the sponge. I kind of go in and out of using sponges. This is the Real Techniques sponge. Um, and yeah, for some reason I go in and out of using them. Because I find once it gets too dirty to actually... when it, I always find when it gets to a point where it's almost too hard to clean anymore. It still stays dirty. I kind of get rid of it and I forget to buy a new one for like a good couple of months. And I think you can kind of customise the coverage you want with it. If you kind of get it wet and like, dab it on how most people do you get more coverage. If you do want a slightly lighter coverage, um, obviously this is Real Techniques, so Pex Pixie would design this, they use it in a swiping motion instead, which I know isn't everyone, everyone thinks, oh no, sponges, you're supposed to dab. But they say they use it in a swiping motion, it gives you a bit of a lighter coverage, so depending on your preference, you've got two different like techniques using with a sponge. I think a sponge kind of helps sink things in and makes things look a little bit more natural, especially if I'm using concealer under the eye, I think it's a really great one. I've been using a lot of powder recently as well, strangely. Um, yeah, it's kind of one of those things that kind of really, I'll use it for a good couple of months, then I'll forget about a sponge for a good couple of months. Um, it's one of those things, but brushes I always tend to use. Um, it's always like a regular in my routine in terms of foundation. So yeah, good buffing brush like it's Luxie or a sponge like Real Techniques is always a winner for me. Moving on to concealer, I think there's no doubt it's going to be the Real Techniques concealer brush. Before this, I used to use things like they had um, their crease brush that I used to use a lot. And I think a lot of people, instead of using it for the crease, um, used it for concealer purposes. And then they brought out one that is meant for concealer. I don't know what I did to mine. Mine has bent in the middle. But it's a really great product and it gives you the most coverage to concealer as well. So especially on my spots. Um, it will give the most coverage for concealer purposes. Again, occasionally I will go in with a sponge and I want a slightly lighter coverage. Or if it's my Hint Beauty concealer, I will use my fingers. I don't mind. But most of the time, this is the concealer brush I go for. Blends out really well. Like I said, will give the most coverage to your concealer. So depending on the area you put it, would depend on kind of the tool you want to use. But it's just a really great little brush for concealer. And it fits quite nicely in all the little areas as well. So it's a great brush. Moving on to powder, again this is not going to be any surprise, it's the Real Techniques setting brush. There is another brush that's suddenly creeped in, occasionally I use for setting, but mainly it's this. It, um, I, as you know if you watched me before, I just like to set the T-zone, I like to keep everything else glowy and fresh, but the T-zone, because I'm already down there, I like to keep set. And it's a perfect size for fitting under the eyes, and it's a perfect size just for doing the T-zone. In terms of density, it's quite at its medium. So it does pick up a fair amount of product, but not too much, and it's good at buffing away. I like this especially for my Lily Lolo uh, Mineral Concealer. This works really well for it. But yeah, I just find it's fluffy, um, but it picks up a proper product to really kind of dust on everywhere. The other brush that has kind of creeped in has been this Iconic brush. Now this annoyingly doesn't have numbers or anything like that on it, so I'll have to look it up and leave it linked down below. But again, I find it's actually quite a good size to fit under the eye. And because it's slightly um, pointed or domed, it fits really nicely. And then it does fit well in the centre of the face. And if I do want to set more of the face, it's a quite a good size, again, to do that. It's slightly fluffier than a setting brush that picks up a bit less product. So if you want a like, lighter touch with your powder, then this is a better one to go for. But... For most days, because I am working, I walk, I'm quite on my feet, I do get quite oily. This is the better brush for me because it will give me pro more product on the areas I want to put more product on. So that's that. Moving on to bronzer. 
Real Techniques Bronzing Brush. No, this is a powder brush, sorry. Um, I've had this again, I think it's featured in my last one. It's just really easy because it's a big one. Um, because I'm not someone who contours really, I like to bronze. It just does the job really fast, really easy because it just sweeps in the areas you want to. So in that three shape, you can just really buff it in. It's quite fluffy, but kind of like a medium density between fluffy and dense. Um, so it picks up quite a good product, but also buffs it out really well. And yeah, it just find it's really easy because it's so big. It just makes it really fast and easy to my bronzer. Um, and again, this must be, this is such an old brush as well, but it cleans really well and it's been fine and I haven't had issues and again, I just think it's a really great brush for bronzer. Blusher. Again, I think it's featured in the last, some, yeah, most of these brushes did feature before I think actually, but um, I just, they don't really change for me, like once I find something I love, I tend to stick with it. So Blusher, Luxie. 504, large angled. I just find it fits really nicely. However, I might need to get a new one of these because it's starting to come apart where the head joins the um, base part of the brush. Where I've cleaned it so much, it's just the glue is coming loose. It's a shame. The hairs haven't really um, come out or it hasn't really started molting or anything like that. It's really easy to clean. And it's quite it's quite a fluffy brush. It doesn't pick up too much product. And for blush, I prefer to build up the intensity of the colour as opposed to go on full whack with a really intense colour because I don't want to like obviously you don't want to look like a clown. You want to give a nice gentle flush. What I do anyway to my cheeks. So it's a good product because it doesn't pick up too. It's a good brush because it doesn't pick up too much product. So you can kind of layer up the kind of intensity of blush that you want to go for. Moving on to highlight. Now there are two brushes, this one you all know about, this is the Ruby brush. Again, I think it's actually an eyeshadow brush, a fluffy eyeshadow crease blending brush. But it's this one I've been going to because it's quite nice at pinpointing where I want the highlight and then buffing it out slightly. Um, and because it's really fluffy, again it doesn't pick up too much product so you can build up the intensity as well. So when I haven't been using that Ruby brush, I have been using the iconic one that I sometimes use for setting my um, powder or using pat for powder. Because again, it's quite a fluffy brush, so it distributes a really nice light amount of highlight. Because I'm not someone who likes a really blinding highlight that some people do. I quite like the more, yeah, I like to have a glow like this, but I like it to be a bit more natural. I find this blends really nice, it kind of sits nicely on the cheekbones. And again, it's really easy and nice to use for highlight purposes as well. So that's why I kind of like interchange those brushes slightly. Okay, so the rest of the brushes are now eye brushes. I'll start with eyebrows. This is the one that I tend to always, if not I always use this for my eyebrows, this is the Real Techniques Slanted Brow Brush. So it has got a slant as you can see and it does make it really easy and I like how thin it is as well so you can create little hair like strokes. Um, and yeah, there's not much more I can say about that, it does create the perfect brow for me and it's the one I usually always use. Now moving on to a kind of eyeshadows. Now, because I have lost my E40 and my pure brush, the kind of go-to fluffy brushes I use at the moment in terms of transitions slash blending out are these two here. So you've got the Luxie 205 Taper Blending, which you guys have seen quite a bit in my videos. And also I've been kind of recently going for this one. This is an iconic London. Again, it doesn't have the name on it, so I'll have to list it down below. But it's a real, this is much fluffier than the Luxie one, if you can see. So this is more of like putting down the eyeshadow first, I'd say, and then going ahead and blending out with this one. Because um, this is much, this the Iconic one's not as dense as the Luxie one, and it's much fluffier. So it's more really good for blending um, the colour out for like transitions and things like that. And then you've also got the Luxie one, which is just as good as well. But it gives, this will put more pigment on down, because it's slightly more denser, and you can go ahead and blend out. So... Those are kind of be my go-to brushes at the moment for kind of doing crease transition work on my eyeshadow. So moving on, when I want to get a bit more precise in the crease section, I go for this brush here. This is the Luxie 231 Small Tip Blending Brush. So it's very similar to the other one I just showed from Luxie, but it's just much smaller, so it fits a bit more into the crease section, so you can kind of direct where you want the eyeshadow to be a bit more and be a bit more precise I guess with it in terms of where you want the pigment to be 
and it just fits nicely into the crease and uh, you can do a bit more like I said preci precision work in the crease section. This will pick up a lot more product than the previous Luxie brush because it is smaller and it's slightly more dense. So when you want your slightly darker colours to be in the crease, this is what this is good for. In terms of really packing on the colour, especially if I want a dark colour on the outer corner, a real technique shading brush is what I've been going to recently. You can see this is actually what I've been using for a blue colour. I think I used this obviously recently for my Nip and Fab One Palette Multiple Looks video. And because it's much smaller and much denser, it really picks up a lot of product. So that's when I really want to use it, especially for like packing in the inner cor outer corner. Or if I'm doing a halo look, it works really well for the inner corner section because it will really place down that pigment that I want. Obviously then I need to go with one of these other brushes I've just mentioned to blend it out. But in terms of really packing on the colour and getting right into the little corner bits, this is a great brush for it. And like I said, really affordable as well. Real Technique is really great pricing. So I really like this brush. In terms of stuff, if I want to place down um, an eyeshadow a bit more precisely, maybe if it's in your third, or if it's concealer, or if it's a glitter, I'll go with a flat brush like this. Admittedly, this is just a Superdrug own brush. I've got quite a few of these, they're really inexpensive. Um, I kind of originally got them for like more special effects type stuff because I didn't mind if they got ruined but actually they work really well for packing on colour or if you want to do like a cut crease or a half cut crease for concealer or like I said packing on glitter as well this works really really well and um, they do come they do have actually slightly bigger sizes as well if you want a bigger size but I think this works quite well because again you can be a bit more precise where you want the placement of your glitter or the eyeshadow or whatever um, and works really well and it's quite a dense brush so pick up a lot of product as well now focus it. The last two brushes I tend to focus more for the lower lash line. Um, first one being the Sentiment Pure E20 brush. So this is a uh, shader brush. This is for something if you want a bit more smoked out because it's it's quite dense, but it's also quite um, not chubby. It is quite a fat brush, so it won't do like a very precise bit under the eye. It kind of is really good for if you want to like shade under the eye, blend it out slightly. Picks up a great amount of product. Now this brush I haven't has been cleaned and you can see it has been stained so that's what I mean by these brushes is that it will get stained depending on the colour you use or the darkness you use um, so something to bear in, mind, bear in mind with these brushes but it does fit nicely under the eyes sometimes I will use this for packing on pigment on the lid but mainly for under the eyes it works really well for that and the final brush, again for under the eyes, but if I want to be more precise, and I think we know what brush I'm about to mention, it's the Kiko brush. They've recently brought this back out from Kiko, so it didn't have it for a while, but it's in a completely different packaging. But it's just their pencil brush. Um, I've got a few other pencil brushes, like from my current London, but for some reason this is the brush I keep going back to. And I like it because you can be a bit more precise under the eye and really get up in there. And I really like it. I also like it for... Um, if I want to put something to define the upper lash line and run it along here, I like it for that as well. But it is definitely one of these brushes that has to say, I have to say, features in nearly every video that I do. That's a makeup look. Pretty sure. Because it's just my go-to brush. And um, I may stock up on the other key cut. So that is this video complete. That's all my favourite current go-to brushes. If you watched the previous one, there's quite a few that are exactly the same because I do, once I find my favourites, I tend to stick to them. But if you're new to my channel, I want to know kind of what are good cruelty-free brands for brushes and things like that, then you've got kind of feel for it. There's a few kind of definitely new brushes that have crept in there, a few new brands that I'm trying for brushes that have crept in there as well. And it just, yeah, like I said, Real Techniques are probably the go-to ones for me because they are affordable, easy to get your hands on if you're in the UK. I think they're quite easy actually in America as well. And like I said, they are affordable and a great brush brand to get your hands on. So, yep, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave a request down below and I'll see you in my next video.